and welcome to In Touch with Durham County, the show designed to give you information about Durham County government programs and services. I'm Deborah Craig Ray, General Manager of Strategic Planning and Innovation. We're still here with you virtually, socially distancing, and bringing you important information. I'm sure most of you have heard of that term, the Great Resignation. That refers to the scores of workers who have chosen to leave employment for various reasons in the age of COVID. Dara Richardson, Business Systems and Operations Manager for Human Resources, is here to talk about how Durham County is working to respond to this trend as it seeks to fill critical public sector positions. We're in an election year. And generally, we have guests on to discuss specific voting information. Today, we're taking a slightly different approach to this important civic privilege. We've invited Carolyn Kruger of Kids Voting Durham, a program in our Cooperative Extension Service, to talk about what that group, that group does to create interest in voting that will last a lifetime. Dara, let's begin our conversation. We're delighted to have you join us today. This is such an important topic. Good morning, Deborah. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Awesome. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your role with Durham County Human Resources as the Business Systems and Operations Manager. Well, in my role here at Durham County as the Business Systems and Operations Manager, I wear a number of hats. One of them is to ensure that all of our systems are running smoothly and I oversee and ensure that our operational pieces that are attached to those systems also are working as well. I also have one more hat that I wear within this role and that is the employment services and recruitment function. And so we cover all types of employment issues. Um, employment services covers transactional activities for employees. If anything needs to be changed regarding their data, pay changes, promotions, we do all of that. In addition, we do the recruitment piece. And so with this new change that we actually went into in late December, we've been able to leverage having a better, closer relationship with departments when it comes to understanding all of their department needs when they're with their employees. Mm -hmm. That goes from separations and being able to see them real time with the department to understanding what critical positions they need to have filled at the moment. That is quite a portfolio, Dara. Since the pandemic began in 2020, you know, workers have resigned across the country. Um, some data I found said that in 2021, about eight and a half million people quit their jobs. And of course, that trend continued in 2022. People resigned from government, from corporate jobs, academic, academia, and more. Um, it's just been steady across the board. Any idea what caused that phenomenon? Oh, yes. There are a number of reasons we're seeing for the great resignation, as some people call it now. Um, many of these are a direct impact from COVID. We have people who took the time to reevaluate their lives and say, you know what, this is just not what I want to do anymore. And they've made significant changes in their careers. Um, we've had a number of baby boomers who have been full in force in the uh, workforce for many, many years who said, it's time for me to retire. There's so much change going on with the world and now is my time to sit back and enjoy retirement. And then we're also seeing a number of uh, younger individuals in the workforce who are saying, you know what, I want flexible work options. I want my work to look different. I want more money. And we're seeing them leverage this employee market right now to do so. They are able to go out here and seek the jobs they want at the salaries they want with the options that they want as well. So we're having to adjust and pivot to be able to meet the need here at Durham County to support all of our departments as we see this uh, trend going on. I can share with you right now, we went from an average about 16% turnover rate. Currently we're experiencing in the, in, um, the last year, a 28% turnover rate, which is extremely high for Durham County. And so uh, we're having to just adjust and meet the need, but we're seeing people leverage this employee market to their advantage. Mm -hmm. And certainly, you know, we have many open positions across the enterprise. And certainly, as you said, we're not unlike other units of government, are we? 
you are absolutely correct. This is going on throughout other units of government and other industries as well. Everyone is being hit and experienced in this. So can you talk about some of the positions that we are currently needing, um, like maybe, you know, public health, law enforcement, other hard to fill positions? Oh, absolutely. I will say that all of our vacancies are extremely crucial to fill because they all impact how we operate to support the wonderful citizens here in Durham County. However, we do see a need in certain areas that are particularly are great and concerning. So you will have public health and we have public health nurses that we've identified as being one of those critical positions. They have additional positions in public health that we're still working to tap into and get filled so their operations can continue seamlessly. Uh, when it comes to the office of the sheriff, they've been impacted. They need assistance when it comes to their detention officers and deputy sheriffs. Um, those, that's one of the key critical areas we've seen people leave and retire or they just wanted a change of job. Some of these jobs also are high stress jobs, especially during COVID. And mm -hmm. so people want to do something different. And we're also seeing that trend in um, the youth home with our youth home counselors and our EMS staff as well. So those are some of the target items, uh, target departments, I should say, that we're really seeing impacted. However, we do have other departments like tax administration and register of deeds recently has been experienced some, some individuals shifting and leaving, um, county engineering and the library as well that are impacted with these vacancies. And when you have small departments like finance and budget that are seeing vacancies, those departments already have a small number of employees that are getting all this great work done that are being impacted as well. So we try to uh, address them all. However, we do have some that have a higher impact than others. Certainly, certainly. Now, I know salary and benefits are important to workers and um, most folks don't know how well Durham County supports its employees with its salary scale and its great benefits. But what is Durham County doing to remain competitive? So you're correct. We have great benefits. Um, you can check them out on our careers page. I'll share more information toward the end of our conversation regarding that. We do push our total compensation so people can look at our total compensation plan. However, we've had to pivot and explore other options to be able to not just retain our current employees, because we want to keep them here and happy, but also hire and attract new individuals. And so in order for us to do that, we've had to look at some different options. How can we support remote work? Do we have positions that we could easily identify that could be 100% remote and those individuals uh, pull in different uh, candidate pools for those positions so we could fill them? Uh, and also remote work options is huge right now. We're seeing a lot of people who want that flexibility. Now, all positions can't have those types of options, but for the ones that can, we're looking at how we can accommodate that and set those positions up so we can get the best and brightest individuals here working for us at Durham in Durham County. In addition, we do have a new class in comp study that will be coming about soon. Um, that process has already begun and we'll be looking at salaries in more detail. It is, com it is uh, hard right now because we're competing with everybody else and everyone is reviewing their salaries. They're trying to make adjustments appropriately and we want to stay competitive as well. One of the things that we have put in place when it, co when it comes to the hard to fill positions are um, bonuses. We do have sign on bonuses for those positions, specifically there for the ones in the youth home, EMS, the uh, office of the sheriff, and they're just certain classifications and they're based off of, um, they're paid out based off of your service uh, performance, I should say, and also uh, the time that you're in the position. So over a period of time, you get that bonus paid out. But it's extremely important for us to have that tool here in order for us to attract uh, new individuals to come to Durham County and fill those positions. Well, that's really great to hear um, that your department and, and our government is being very innovative in that area. So what is the impact on employees who work in a division that has a great number of vacancies? I mean, how, how do they manage to get the work done when they're missing, uh, you know, other resources? That's a great question. I would say that right now we are um, a very resilient workforce. 
as uh, many people may be aware or may not be aware, we went through not just COVID hitting us, but a cyber attack and mm -hmm. having to bounce back from that. And our employees have had to do um, more with less for a little while and pivot and make adjustments and deal with all this change at once. And so it has played a huge uh, impact on the employee experience. I would say employees are working to make these changes. We have some areas that have more overtime than they would normally experience in order to make sure we're covering and, and able to still provide our wonderful services to the county. And then sometimes we have to shift and departments have to make uh, organizational changes to support what's needed at the moment. And so it's a, it's a constant movement of uh, making sure that we're able to support the organization. Absolutely. I noticed that uh, a few departments have actually created some recruitment videos to help, you know, market their openings. Is that a good strategy? It is a good strategy. I know for one, uh, DSS may have been the first department to take on an initiative like this. And it was also very helpful in not just the recruiting, but giving people insight into some of the critical work they do. So you may think that you know what goes on in a wonderful department like social services, but having those videos and uh, ex um, experiences shared from the employees is critical and important. So I know, you know, we've talked a good bit about um, trying to get new people in the door, but is there any thought to trying to keep people from resigning in the first place? Yes. Now, there are some things going on. First of all, uh, we did have a project last year where we dug into to actually identify those hard to fill positions that we talked about earlier. And as a result, there were a number of initiatives that came out of it. So not that we're just focusing on the hard to fill positions, but our wonderful employees that are already here at Durham County. So we had a wonderful retention bonus that was paid out earlier this year to employees that are here. We're hoping that these types of initiatives will stay on board for employees. We're also uh, uh, recommending the pay for performance to be upped and changed. That's one of the critical things we hear about a lot. We have uh, the constant battle with some of the local jurisdictions because their pay for performance is a bit higher than ours here mm -hmm. at Durham County. And so that would be something that could help employees as well. And then asking employees for feedback and seeing what we can change to be able to assist them. Uh, we have wonderful programs that we put in place while COVID was going on. We have a County U, um, which is County University training that's in place now where employees can get robust training, um, which is virtual. They can go online and sign up for majors just to add some additional things to help them with their personal and career growth while they're here. So stay on the lookout because Benefits has some news coming up soon. And uh, you know, we'll continue to keep our uh, keep listening out from what the employees are wanting us to change to be able to continue to have them here in the organization and don't leave. I think Durham County is a fabulous place to work, but we want them all to feel the same way. Absolutely. So um, are you planning any recruitment activities, either, you know, job fairs? Are you using a virtual platform to do recruitment? Yes, we've taken a number of different uh, changes or I should say innovations that we're looking into. Uh, we've been partnering for some time with NC Works, but we've developed a new relationship with them and we're mm -hmm. able to actually go in now and target hard to fill positions or maybe even not hard to fill, but there are some positions in the organization it's hard to find good candidates for. And so we're able to tap into that system to see individuals who meet the criteria for our positions and be able to invite them in for some additional conversations to see if they'll be interested in working for Durham County. We also are looking to do virtual and face-to-face -face job fairs this year. And we're looking to leverage a new internship program that will create a pipeline of candidates um, from our local community college here in Durham and also from our high schools uh, that will allow us to create that pipeline, bringing in uh, these individuals for our entry level positions. We do have entry level positions in a number of departments, so we can actually bring in people and give them on the job training as well as them le leveraging the County U program for training and they could segue in and grow within our organization. So we have that pipeline right here from our own citizens in our county. That's outstanding. Uh, we're, we're about out of time. Just a couple more things. If um, people are looking for positions with Durham County, where will they find that information? 
you can go to the wonderful internet and find us at careers.dconc.gov. Uh, you could go there and search for our positions. Uh, the positions that offer the sign-on bonuses will have them listed when you go in and look at the details on the positions. But we have a number of positions open and we're looking to get them all filled. So I'm so excited for this year. We have, uh, although we have a record number of vacancies, we're looking for record number of recruitment and new hires to join our organization. Well, I know that's going to happen. I just want to thank you so much for all that you and our HR team does for our employees and our job seekers. And I appreciate you joining us today and sharing this wonderful information. Take care. Thank you so much. Don't touch that dial. Carolyn Kruger of Kids Voting Durham will join us shortly. Stay with us. I have family members who I care about deeply and they have given me reasons uh, as to why they don't want to get the vaccine. Many of them are young and I tell them about my pandemic experience and I have to account for every death in Durham County. And I let them know that this vaccine is safe, it's effective, it's not gonna impede uh, your way of life. It's not going to stunt your swag, if you will. If anything, it's going to make you healthier and you should get the vaccine as soon as possible. My name is Grace Jones and I'm an emergency medical technician in Durham County. I'm from the Triangle. Deciding to become an EMT, that's when I knew that this was the right place to work. I want to do this work, you know? I help somebody every day. Somebody cares that I showed up to work. Making a difference, I think that's important. You get such a variety of calls. We have world-class hospitals and schools. Durham EMS sees it all. The challenge of being an EMT? It's a bit more personal. You're going into people's homes. My partner and I need to be sensitive when we step into their lives, when they need help. You may think a call is one thing and you get there and it's completely different. You never know what to expect. The adrenaline flows and you have to kick into action. You have to be ready, it's exciting. Taking care of my community, helping my neighbors, there's nothing more rewarding than that. That's why I do this. I am Durham County EMS. My name is Ryan Shaw, and I'm a paramedic with Durham County EMS. We care for people having what could be a really bad day. They turn to us, complete strangers really, to help them. I joined the volunteer fire department when I was 16 as a junior firefighter, but the medical side of emergency services really motivated me and I decided I wanted to be a paramedic. Knowing I helped improve somebody's life, the look on their face when they start to feel better, that's a big motivating factor for me. We all work together and there's continuing education and opportunities for advancement. Being a paramedic, it's exciting work to take care of different types of people and the unique challenges that they face is one of the driving factors for me wanting to work for Durham. It's a tough job, I'm up for the challenge, and I can't think of a better place to work. My name is Jenna Bajwa and I'm a paramedic with Durham County EMS. Our ambulances respond to calls from non-emergencies to advanced life support calls. The variety keeps me on my toes and there are so many things you just don't see in other counties. The police and fire departments are integral to the overall EMS system. This partnership is vital to the success of all of our calls. I'm from Durham, I moved away for a little bit and now with my job I feel like I'm at home. It's who I am. I like how it's not all emergencies, it's patient care, it's public service, it's taking care of the truck, it's always being ready, it's face-to-face -face contact. Patient care is public service and that's important to me. We get so much experience handling such a wide variety of situations that two years in Durham might equal 10 years somewhere else. Durham EMS is the right place for me. I can't imagine being anywhere else. The heart of Durham, we keep it beating. Welcome back to More In Touch. We're pleased to be joined by Carolyn Kruger of Kids Voting Durham. Welcome, Carolyn. I'm excited about our conversation today. I'm excited to be here and to tell you a little bit more about Kids Voting Durham. Thanks for having me, Deborah. Absolutely. So I believe Kids Voting Durham helps our young people understand the power that they have as citizens and informed voters. What's the background of this important organization? 
So we came to Durham County Cooperative Extension in 2005. The organization had been here in Durham since 2000, run by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, but Durham County, as the, the Chamber was letting it go, saw an opportunity to really help our young people become more engaged citizens, starting from an early age. Um, and so our program has been here since 2005, uh, helping young people engage through uh, curriculum that we develop for the classroom, lessons, family education activities, youth voice activities where we connect youth with the decision makers, and of course our big banner event every year which is letting kids vote in the same elections on the same candidates and issues as adults. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what ages do you serve and what's the overall goal of Kids Vote in Durham? So uh, we serve uh, young people from birth uh, on up and we serve their parents and as soon as they can vote and hold a pencil they can come take part in kids voting elections and our overall goal um, is to help young people develop the skills the knowledge and the sense of agency and identity that they need to become fully empowered citizens in the future, of course, when we hope they'll grow up to be active and informed voters. But also now, um, most of the things except for voting that are part of being a good civic participant, youth can do right now. In addition, we also hope that they are going to get their families excited about voting. Um, young people have a lot of influence over the adults in their lives, and uh, particularly in local elections where our turnout is low, young people can really be the key to getting adults informed and engaged in elections. Yeah. So how are you organized? How large is your staff? And do you have volunteers? So our staff is fairly small. It is me and our wonderful partners here at Cooperative Extension. Um, our staff is multiplied, though, by the partnerships we have within Durham County, which is what makes Durham County such a great home for us. Uh, so particularly right now, with the school board elections coming up, uh, the libraries are wonderful partners to us. Both Maine and North Regional Library will be holding kids voting during all of early voting, starting April 28th through May 14th, through May 17th, Election Day, in their early voting, they're in their children's uh, sections of the library. Um, and the nice thing is they are both early voting sites for adults, so families can vote together. An adult can cast their ballot in the primary and the school board election at early voting at these sites, and young people can come and vote in the children's section for school board. Um, and so voting can be a family affair. Wonderful. So why is civic education so important? Well, particularly in local elections, we see 5 to 15 percent of Durham adults showing up to vote. And we know that we need more voters. We also know that voters need to be more informed and that uh, Becoming an informed electorate is part of what makes our democracy work. So unless we have citizens that are learning the skills like voting and how to contact elected officials uh, that they need to participate fully in our democracy, our democracy won't work at its very best. So have there been any of your, your participants through the years who've gone on to win an elective office? And there certainly are. In fact, the youngest elected official ever uh, in Durham history, Anjali Boyd, uh, was a kids voter from the time that she was in early elementary school. And she credits her kids voting experience with part of what made her think about becoming an elected official, particularly at such a young age. Um, the fact that she felt engaged and part of elections uh, from the time that she was in elementary school. And that's one thing that research shows us again and again, is that if you wait to get a young person engaged and connected to civic participation in the electoral process until they're 18, it's almost too late to get them involved. The younger that you get a person involved, the more likely they are to continue through adulthood in being involved in ways such as voting and other forms of civic participation. That's exciting. Um, can you talk about some of the activities you provide for your participants? I know you've got different age groups, but I imagine you have workshops, classes, hands-on events. Well, right now, our big event is the Durham School Board election, which is happening from April 28th until May 17th. And so young people are invited to come cast a vote in their schools. Um, participating schools can uh, 
offer kids voting free of cost to their students. Um, we have about 13 schools signed up right now, but if other schools are interested in participating, they can contact Kids Voting um, and uh, sign up with us on our website, which is uh, kidsvotingdurham.org. Um, they can also, youth can vote at our two early voting sites at the Durham County Library, as, as I mentioned, and they can vote online. Of course, we want them to cast an informed vote, so youth write their own election guide. So we've had a team of about 15 uh, youth leaders from Kids Voting Durham, but also from the Office on Youth and Durham Public Schools Foundation, working to create uh, candidate profiles, questionnaires, and information about this election that's available to all youth, but in reality, it is the best election guide out there, so many adults use it as well. And you can also find that at kidsvotingdurham.org. Excellent. So I'm thinking back to the big election in 2020, but at the same time, we were going through a pandemic. So how did the pandemic impact your ability to provide this program um, in 2020, the last presidential election? That was an exciting election, and I think uh, the fact that we had 100% of Durham Public Schools participate during that election shows that there is no stopping civic engagement. So we moved a lot of our activities for that election online. Mm -hmm. Typically, we would have voting at precincts, which we haven't completely returned to for kids voting since the pandemic. But that year, we let uh, all schools participate online. Uh, we had online workshops. We had, again, the online election guide. Um, so we and we were able to work with Durham Public Schools through particularly um, them becoming a one to one district where every student had a computer and was able to participate. And we were able to put many of our materials and programs on Canvas, which is the uh, system that Durham Public Schools uses to assign students uh, work and information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So are you able to meet in person now? We are able to uh, work with the schools in person. Um, so many of the schools are now going back to in-person voting using actual paper ballots and our ballot boxes and our booths. We try to recreate the adult voting experience as much as possible. We're again having in-person voting at the library sites. And eventually we hope that we will return to having kids voting at precincts on election day. Very good. Now, um, I heard you mention earlier you've got great partnerships um, in Durham County. Um, so are you in need of volunteers? Yes, we can always use volunteers to help with Durham, with our elections. Um, this year, particularly, we need people to help us count ballots on May 16th and 17th so that we can get the kids their results uh on election evening, just like the adults get their results. Um, we also have some opportunities to work at some of the early voting sites that we have and to help youth actually cast their vote. Um, and again, uh, you can contact me. My email is c-k-r-e-u-g-e-r -E -E at dcoenc.gov. Um, and our phone number here is 919-560-7321 if you're interested in learning more about volunteering. Civic engagement is so important and having our young people's voice heard within our communities when they voice their vote is important not just to youth but to all of us in knowing what our youth are thinking. Um, if you're an adult casting a, a ballot in this school board election, unless you've talked to a young person who's actually in our schools every day and experiencing that about what they think about the candidates and issues, you're not casting the best ballot that you can. Yeah, I, I just think it's exciting to think about uh, your child will remind you that it's important to vote. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate all you do, and we're going to have to have you back. Well, that wraps up today's show. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on In Touch with Durham County. Cheers. <music>